Hey, what's going on, Freedom Crusaders and friends? Hope you're having an amazing day. Hey, I wanted to go live today and talk about a topic that I think is really interesting. It's one that has come up a lot over my years in home-based business, and I've thought about it a lot, and I, and I think a lot of people think about this. And there's some conflicting advice out there, and so this topic can be really, really confusing. And the title of the video is, should faith be private and separate from home-based business, or should you somehow find a way to weave your faith into your marketing message? And the first thing that comes to mind is some general advice that I think has been floating around in society for a long time, and that is never, there's two topics you should never discuss. This is what, this is what people say, right? Never discuss religion and never discuss politics. And <laughs> so, you know, that advice makes a lot of sense for a lot of reasons, uh, because a lot of times most of the arguments that you see within families or friendships or even on social media, a lot of times boil down to arguments over religion and arguments over politics. And so the advice to not talk about religion and politics <clears throat> in marketing the intention behind it, I think, is really good. And the intention is to keep peace and not offend anyone and not alienate anyone in your marketing. Now, that being said, <clears throat> as I've thought about that advice over the years, I thought I've thought to myself, you know, there's there's two big there's two big aspects to life that seem to be really important um, that have an effect, a big effect on us individually and also on society as a whole. And those two areas are um, faith slash religion. And I make some differences between those, but you know, for um, the purpose of this uh, this conversation, we can kind of chunk them together. And politics; those seem to be two really, really important topics. And I've often thought it ironic that those are the two topics we're never supposed to <laughs> talk about in our marketing. So that being said, to just kind of lay a, lay a framework here and a beginning for the conversation. By the way, I see we've got some live viewers here. Thanks for being here today. Let me know who you are. I've got a, a chat feed where I can pop up your comment and let me know, you know where you're at. If you're watching the replay, uh, say hi as well. Um, speaking of that, I wanted to give a shout out to Jeff Brown, Glenda Dedong, Cedric, Wil Cedric Wilson, Richard Hairston, and Mike Hobbs, uh, who left some great comments on my, my YouTube content the other day. So really appreciate you guys. Thanks for doing that. Um, and, um, and then, so I wanted to also, before I get into it, so I've got a story that I want to share, um, that relates to this topic that I think is pretty powerful. And then I've got some tips. Hey, Edward, it says, depend on who your audience is and whether you care about offending someone. Yeah, great, great, great uh, point, Edward. And Mike says, woohoo, great topic. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Appreciate you, man. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a story um, from my business it happened just this week that I think is pretty powerful that relates to this topic. And then I want to give you three tips for being able to share your faith, if that's something that you want to do, in a way that is maybe going to attract people to you, the right people, without um, causing harm uh, in 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 the market and in people's minds, without without creating contention. I guess that's the main thing: is can you share your faith in a way? in your business where you attract to you the people that you want to attract and at the same time not create and stir up hate and discontent, right? Because that's why people say don't talk about faith, uh, religion and, and politics. Um, so uh, Gio just popped in. He says, hey, Paul, great video. I feel like I haven't seen you forever. <laughs> hey, Gio, good to see you, man. I can't wait to see you in person. Gio and I are going to meet in person here in a couple of weeks in Phoenix, Arizona. So anyway, that's, the, that's what I'm going to talk about today. But before I do that, I wanted to... Um, just share, you know, a little bit of exciting news. Um, I love sharing exciting news. I think there's a lot of uh, not so positive news in the world. And so anytime I can share positive news, I want to do that. And this will be super fast uh, before I get into the, uh, the, the topic for today. Um, let me see if I can uh, share screen. So here we go. Let me see if I can share this screen and then I'll add it to the feed. <clears throat> so I wanted to just give a quick shout out to 
uh, two people, uh, Daniela Taylor, she said in our company, she said, hey, family, I made my first two sales today. Very happy. Thank you. So way to go, Daniela. So happy and excited for you. Uh, when people make their first sales, it, it, I don't know, it really pumps me up because I remember when I made my first sale online and it was transformational because I said to myself, look, if I can make one sale, if I can use my computer and my mind and my voice to create one sale, that means I can create 10 or 100 or 1,000. And it was so exciting to me when I made my first sale. I actually remember making a photocopy of the check that came to me and taping it up on the brown paneled walls of my single wide trailer house behind my laptop computer. And every day when I was working, I would look at that first check and it was like $45, but it inspired the heck out of me. So congrats, Daniela. And then there was another one I wanted to shout out here in our group. Um, here it is, Sharon Wright. She said, my HBA family, I am so excited, humbled, and honored to be a part of such an amazing team in an even more amazing program. Thank God for HBA. I made my first sale today. <laughs> Thank you, Paula Chings and Mike Hobbs and everyone in, in, in our community. Uh, what I really love about this, oh my God, you can feel the excitement in her voice, right? Thank God for HBA. That's the name of our company. I made my very first sale today. And you can feel the gratitude kind of beaming from her post. So congratulations, Sharon. So excited for you. I believe it's the first of many. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to share just super fast is we uh, recently made, uh, crossed another milestone in our company. Right now, we um, I just took this this morning. We as a community and as a company uh, are generating $215,000 per month in recurring revenue. <coughs> and you see, I've got the FTC disclaimer. Average affiliates can expect to earn $347 with this business for full earnings disclosure. Visit income.thba.net. Uh, so I won't read the rest of it. But uh, but that's exciting uh, for a couple of reasons. We pay 80% commissions with, with our program. And so we have a lot of residual income going out to families, uh, individuals, freedom crusaders, people who are working on disconnecting their time from their money. And that's a huge amount of people going out to affiliates. And that, that excites me uh, you know, to no end. And the other reason that's exciting, and I'll stop my screen share if I can. Um, oh, thank goodness it wasn't working. I was, I was a little nervous that it's it wasn't going to work for me <laughs> in the middle of a live. What happens? My computer freezes up. Ah! Um, but yeah, the other thing that's cool about that is we donate a portion of that to uh, help feed starving kids. So I'm not going to calculate the number, but it's a big number on a monthly basis that we're doing together as a community. So I'm about to get into the content. I had a couple other comments. I love your perspective on this topic. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, congratulations. That is awesome. Making online sales is amazing. Yes. Um, that is what I say every day. Thank God for HBA. Thank you. And I think for, I'm thankful for you every day and I'm also thankful for our community. So, all right guys, so let's get into the, the content that I wanted to share with you. So, um, should faith be private and separate from home-based business? So here's the story that happened in my life this week. I had a guy reach out to me. His name is Joe and we got on a phone call and 90 minutes later, we finished that phone call. <laughs> this is like two nights ago. It was on an evening when my wife and kids were, were gone. And so I had time to, to just sit and talk to, to Joe. And during this conversation, Joe said something to me that kind of surprised me a little bit. Um, oh, and let me back up. Before this phone call happened, about two weeks ago, I was talking to one of my best friends, a great leader, uh, affiliate partner in our company, Nick Bramble. And Nick was sharing with me how he feels called to share more of his faith in his marketing. And I said, I'm feeling the same way. And so we had this conversation about the pros and cons and how can you do it in a way that's good. So we had that conversation and that was a conversation that inspired me maybe to start sharing a little bit more about, about my faith. <clears throat> Not in an overbearing, dogmatic, forceful way, but just kind of mixing in some things with my emails and my social media posts and stuff like that. So then we get to this conversation that I'm having with Joe. Joe said, Paul, one of the things that attracted to me, attracted me to you was how you share your faith in your marketing. And I was like, really? Wow, that's cool. And he's like, I really admire that. And 
I, as I had this 90 minute conversation with Joe, he went on to tell me like we started this great friendship and he was sharing with me things that were teaching me and inspiring me. And hopefully I was doing the same for him. But he told me this story. He said, you know, I, he said, he said, I, um, I had had a lot of success early on in life. And then I got off on the wrong track where I got, I got addicted to drugs and alcohol. And for a long time, I was just, you know, for lack of a better word, messed up. And then in 2017, <clears throat> he said this, he said, I met God and everything changed. And then he went on to, you know, share with me how his life is transformed and he is, com you know, completely different. He's taking care of his health. He's reading great books. He's, he's on a spiritual path. And it wasn't any specific path, you know, it was, wasn't my path, wasn't any specific organization's path. It was his path and it was a spiritual path. And I was so inspired by that. And then the next, and then he ended up joining my business. So welcome aboard, Joe. So glad you got started. And then the next morning we had a Zoom and we talked for two hours. And again, it was this other experience of where like, it was just like, he's a great guy. He has, uh, uh, you know, similar uh, views on things and he has faith and he wants to do the best that he can to show up in life and shine his light in the best way he can. And it was just great. And I was so thankful for this new relationship. And I have to wonder, you know, would that relationship have been started had I not been willing to share some of my faith in my marketing? Chase says, love your perspective on this topic. Thank you, Chase. Appreciate that very much. Uh, Wanda said, praise be to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Wanda. Appreciate that. Um, so I am thankful that I've been sharing a little bit more of my faith in my marketing. And I wanted to give you guys um, a couple of uh, things that I'm thinking about in how to do this in a good way. So the first thing that came up for me when I titled this video, Should Faith Be Private and Separate from Home Business? The first question I have is, can it even ever be private? And the reason I say that is because I believe that our beliefs manifest in the way that we show up in life. So if you're doing nothing more than following your faith and building your business in a way that is in harmony with whatever your faith is, people are probably going to pick up that message whether you say anything about it or not. So that's the first thing, you know, um, uh, just, just be aware that your actions oftentimes speak louder than your words. So this topic of, you know, should I share my faith? How should I share my faith? Um, again, you know, your example, Paulo Coelho said, the world is changed by your example, not your opinion. So I think that's something to always keep in mind is that the best expression of our faith is how we show up in life, how we exist. Do we walk the path that we say we believe in? And oftentimes if we're just walking that path and we're practicing what we might be thinking about preaching at some point, that will be a message that people will hear loud and clear. I have a great friend, Peter Tinsley, and um, he, he one time said, uh, and whether you're a Christian or not, this, this is a powerful message. He said, preach the gospel, and if necessary, sometimes use words. <laughs> I really love that phrase. <laughs> so thank you, Peter, for that. And that perfectly illustrates this first point <clears throat> um, that I'm, that I'm uh, trying to illustrate here. So Adam says, that's one of the main reasons that drew me to HBA. Wow, so cool. Thank you, Adam, for that. Uh, Joe Perry says, proud of you. Thank you, Joe. Love you, brother. Joe's a great mentor and friend to me. Uh, has had so much success in business and life and is really just a great man. Um, if you guys don't know Joe Perry, he he actually has a nutritional product that, and, and I'm, I'm not trying to promote, you know, anything here, but anyway, maybe I'll get into that another, another time. <laughs> but Joe's a good guy. Connect with Joe. Um, such a great topic and feel the same way about HBA. Love this place. Uh, that's one of these. I mean, okay. I think I already read that one. Okay. So the tips. <clears throat> so after that, the three tips that I would share, if you're going to share your faith, number one, be humble. And to me, humility equals teachability, be teachable. So when I'm sharing parts of my faith, I never want to come off as I know all the answers and what I'm sharing is true for everybody. 
I like to be teachable and, and endeavor to say things from my perspective. A great phrase to use that I picked up from Jim Rohn. Uh, he said, whenever we're talking about the truth, a great phrase to use is, it seems to me. Um, and so that's an expression of humility. Be, be humble. Uh, you know, there's a great phrase I picked up. It's uh, from St. Augustine. He said this in the third or fourth century. Um, <clears throat> and it was, um, si comprehendis, um, si comprehendes non es Deus. And what that means translated to English is, if you think you've understood God, that ain't God. <laughs> and so that expresses that idea of humility. And I think people are receptive to hearing ideas if they know that you're just another human like them trying to figure it out. So that spirit of humility, I think, is really important. The second tip that I would pass along is be tolerant. And tolerance, <clears throat> I mean, this is a big topic. We could talk a lot about this. But just in simple terms, tolerance to me says, I may disagree with you, but I love you anyway. And it's this state of being where you allow people the space to be different and think differently and maybe even have beliefs that are different than yours. Be open to like, you know, feedback from people and just be okay with that and love them anyway. <clears throat> I think that's a really good um, thing to keep in mind. Um, Sam, <laughs> Sam Simmons says, say hallelujah. I love this topic. All right. Well, hallelujah, Sam. I do too. <clears throat> so be humble, be tolerant. And then the third tip that I would recommend is be aware of group set group settings. So I might feel a little more flexibility in my personal marketing to say certain things. Um, and I might be a little more reserved in a specific set of group, a specific group of people if I know that maybe the things that I would say in the group might be a little out of alignment with the group culture or the group expectations. Um, and, and, you know, an e easy example of this is let's say, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to pick a couple of uh, religious groups. Let's say I'm a Baptist and I, and I love my religion and I have the chance to go hang out with some Catholics and I run into this, you know, Catholic meeting on a Sunday morning and I'm like, this is my chance. And I run up to the front of the room and I start, you know, sharing my beliefs with all of those people in a way that might make them all feel pretty uncomfortable. That's a perfect example of just being aware of group settings and kind of trying to understand the, um, the expectations and the culture of whatever group it is that, you know, you're speaking to. I think that's just a really good thing to do. Um, and, and that kind of leads me to another idea um, is that, um, you know, I was having a conversation with a friend yesterday about this. Um, you know, if you're a truth seeker, uh, which I think probably everyone who's watching any of my videos probably considers themselves to be a truth seeker. High five. High five for the truth seekers. <laughs> you know, um, sometimes you might find yourself in a situation where you feel that you have found a truth on a certain topic. And you're in a group of people that might be thinking differently than you. And your desire to speak the truth is there. And your awareness that even though you want to speak the truth, it may cause contention within the people that you are serving. And so I guess like in, in these situations, it kind of comes down to what are what are your highest values? You know, is, is speaking the truth anywhere, everywhere, no matter who you're talking to, your highest value or is love and harmony maybe a little bit higher? As important as truth is, maybe love and, and harmony is a little bit higher than speaking the truth. Um, <clears throat> so that's just a good thing to uh, to remember sometimes. And, and this takes and I'm not an expert on it, but it, it it takes, I guess, what some people would call wisdom to know when are the good times to speak the things that you want to speak and when are the good times to uh, keep your silence in order to maintain love and harmony. Uh, in Freemasonry, uh, I'm not a Freemason, but I've read some Freemason uh, literature. There's a great phrase in Freemasonry that says something to the effect of a silent tongue and a faithful heart. And I think it's the silent tongue part of that is referring more to keeping confidences when you're when someone shares something with you that private that's private, you keep that confidence and you're somebody that people know they can trust with things. 
But that silent tongue, um, that's a great phrase to keep in mind. Sometimes it's good to just keep silent to maintain good relationships. So those are my three thoughts, guys, on should faith be private and separate from home business. Um, I'm going to check some of the comments here. <clears throat> David Gibson says, I love this topic. Great point of view. Thank you, David. Appreciate that. Arnita says, yeah, tricky topic. It really, really is. The spirit of humility will go a long way. Absolutely right, Arnita. Um, love and harmony, Wanda says. Uh, amen to that. Uh, Joe says, speak the truth in love. Yeah, speak the truth in love. And 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 also, um, you know, another thing that I try to be aware of is um, look for people who are open to hearing because sometimes you can speak the what you perceive to be the truth and you could be 100% right, but if the person does not have ears to hear, not only will they not hear what you've said, but now you have the opportunity to damage the relationship, which means that not only right now do they not have ears to hear, but now never will they have ears to hear because you've ruined the relationship. And so sometimes if you can keep that relationship with someone who might not have ears to hear right now, the relationship continuing on provides a possibility and a potential for that conversation to happen later on down the road. And that seems to me to be a good thing. So thank you, Joe. Um, and Mike Hobb says, um, yeah, the way most people share politics and religion just causes fights and doesn't change anyone's mind. So your advice on how to share it effectively is huge. And I believe the only way someone would actually change their views on something. Wow. Thank you so much, Mike. Um, and probably all you guys know who Mike is. He's my best friend, my business partner. We've been working together for over 10 years. Love him deeply. Uh, he's had so much success online as a humble guy, a uh, servant. And, um, and uh, his, his, his perspective is really, really important because he's experienced uh, so much in home business. So pay attention to that comment, guys. So, all right, guys, well, I'm going to end the video. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, live around the replay. And uh, if you're just catching me for the first time and maybe you want to uh, stay connected, <laughs> get more content like this, love to invite you to subscribe to my email list at pipelinemoney.com or follow me on whatever social media platform you're catching this video on. And uh, I would love to do my best to serve you, lift you, help you pass along lessons that I'm finding valuable in my uh, freedom and uh, home business journey and my life journey. Sometimes I pass along lessons that are just helping me in life. So thanks, everybody. Love you guys. Get out there. Make it a great day. Take care and bye for now.